What's up everybody? Welcome to Pulp Fishing and in this video I'm going to show you how to put together the SPS Swamp Printer Kit using the 212cc Predator Engine from Harbor Freight. Now everything you need to build this motor comes together in the kit minus a couple of things. You're going to need some anti-seize, some thread locker blue, some female and male butt connectors in 16 gauge sizing, you're going to need some 16 gauge wire to extend the kill switch, you're going to need zero, one, or two weight grease for, for the assembly itself, and I would recommend getting some heat shrink and crimping tool. So with that being said, let's get into the video. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take your coupler shaft and put on your PTO shaft. Keep in mind you want to line up the key, the key slot on your PTO shaft with the keyway slot on your coupler shaft. Now we have two three millimeter Allen heads. You want to make sure you put some blue Loctite on these on the threads of these. And now we're going to tighten them to five foot pounds or 60 inch pounds. All right, now you're going to take your grease and you're going to grease your coupler shaft housing. You're going to fill it about a third of the way full. We're going to pack the flange in, which is this right here. About like that. All right. All right, so your next step, you want to make sure you take off the splines on your coupler shaft. Set it to the side. Now, you want to take your coupler housing and slide it on to your coupler shaft and you want them holes to line up. Now you want to take your bolts for the coupler housing and you want to apply some anti-seize to them to prevent corrosion. And just put them in like this. Also you want to make sure that these zerks, your grease fittings, are pointed upwards. Okay, one thing I briefly forgot to mention, make sure you have your lock washers on these, on these bolts whenever you're putting them in. You're gonna need those. All right, so just keep in mind, you wanna run these bolts in in a crisscross pattern. All right, these are half inch bolts. I'm gonna be using my gun. You probably should use a ratchet, but I'm using this. I'm also using a swivel socket to help me get to, get to the corners because it won't be straight on. And you want to tighten these to 10 to 12 foot pounds. That looks good. All right, so your next step, you want to take the spline coupler nut that you just took off and you want to put your anti-seize on the internal threads of it. Just take a little bit, run it in there. Now, we're gonna attach this to the coupler shaft in here using our coupler tool. That come, this comes in the kit. All you gotta do is you line it up like this, slide it in, and you'll feel it catch, and you just hand tighten it. Don't crank on it, just get it hand tight because once you turn the engine over and actually run it, it's gonna tighten it some more. All right, so your next step is you want to put your transom bracket onto your, onto your boat. Now, before you do this though, you want to take a tape measure and you want to measure the bottom width of your boat and find your center line and make a guide because you want this to be centered on the boat. I already did that right here, so I'm gonna go ahead and mount it. And now you're gonna tighten your transom bracket up to the transom. Get it nice and snug. Now, once you get these tight, you need to tighten these jam nuts back here. These are 13 16 so you get your wrench, run it up here, and you want to tighten it to keep it from backing off. All right. 
right, so the next thing you want to do is you want to grab your engine, engine bracket, pull your washer and your nut off, and you want to grease the shaft with the same grease you were using earlier. Just like so. Now, oop, drop that. Now, slide it through here. Like so. Now you want to apply blue Loctite to the threads, just like so. Now go ahead and put your washer and your nut back on. All right, so now what you want to do, you want to take your cotter pin and put it through the little hole, pinhole right here, just like this. Take it, and bend it down, out of the way. All right, so one thing that's very important that you need to, that you need to remember, your engine bracket, like, like this, your engine mount, should not be pointing up like this. It should be sitting down in a saddle like this. Easy way to tell, your jam nuts and your retaining bolts need to be pointing up towards the sky. That's how your engine's gonna sit, and it's gonna sit just like this. All right, so your next step is you want to take your jam nuts and back them out all the way on the right side, just about where they're loose. Now you're going to take your tiller handle and you're going to run it through here on the right side. Okay. Keep in mind, there's holes in the tiller handle based on where you want the tiller handle to position at that's coming from you. I'm going to keep mine right here, and you're going to line this hole up with this front jam nut. Once you get that one set in, tighten the back one a little bit just to hold it in place. Now take your jam nut to the front and run it in. With a half inch wrench. All right, so now we're about to mount our engine to the engine bracket. You're gonna to need to grab the four bolts that for the, for the engine mount, okay? And they got a washer, a lock washer, and a nut. Real quick, just go ahead and apply Loctite to the threads of each bolt, just a little bit. So now you want to take your engine and put it on your engine bracket. Make sure you line the holes up and take your bolt and shove it through the bottom so that way your nut is going to be on the top. You want to have your big washer and your lock washer on the top with the nut. Now just remember when you're putting these nuts on your bolt, you want to have the big washer on the bottom and the lock washer on top of the big washer and then slide your nut on. It's going to be kind of a pain to get it on there but just take your time and you can get it. Alright so once you get the nuts fit on the bolts you want to tighten them down all except the one right below the oil level sensor because you're going to have to tie in a wire to that and I'll show you here in a second. These bolts are half inch or 13 millimeter except one that's a 9 16 and a 14 millimeter. Okay, so when you're tightening on these engine bolts, make sure you leave this bolt right here loose. Reason why is because this right here is your oil sensor wire. You're going to splice in your kill switch to this. So you need to have a ground coming off your kill switch going to here is where it's going to tie into. All right now, for your handle, when you put it together, see this little, these little lines right here? You want to line those up because that's where your throttle cable is going to go. I'm just going to slide it over the top of our tiller handle. Now go ahead, pull your throttle cable all the way out of its sleeve. Now there's going to be a little hole on the bottom and on the top of, of your tiller handle. You're going to feed the sleeve of your throttle cable through either one you want to do. It's going to feed it through all the way to the back. Now we're going to put our throttle cable inside our throttle cable sleeve. Make sure you lubricate it before you put it in. Now, remember what I was talking about? Line up the little line in here. Put your throttle cable and sleeve through. Oops. Like so. Put that cam in that little slot. Now you're just going to tighten it down. Just like so. 
All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull off our air cleaner assembly so we can mount our throttle cable. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna remove this hose up here and we're gonna move this hose over here on top of the crankcase. Next, we're gonna pull off these two 10 millimeter nuts. Now we're gonna mount our actual throttle cable. So we're gonna loosen up this bracket right here, Phillips head screwdriver, make it nice and loose. Feed your sleeve through here. Now we're gonna clamp it right there. Take your cable, you're gonna feed it through here. Make sure you loosen up this little nut right here, or the screw, and you're gonna feed it through like so. Take your time, get it right. And then just go ahead, clamp it down. All right, now we're gonna put our air cleaner back on. Don't forget to put the hoses back where they belong. Oh, one thing I almost forgot to mention, make sure you have your choke lever set to off. I'm sorry, make sure you have your choke lever set to choke. You don't want it like that, you're not gonna be able to get it back on. Don't forget to tighten down this four millimeter Allen head that's on the side of your handle. Okay, so now we're about to mount our kill switch to the tiller handle. But there's one thing you need to make sure of. You need to know which one's ground. You see this metal disc right here? The wire exiting out of it? This is your ground wire. It comes through the assembly. Back out the top right here. This is your ground wire. Okay, so now we're gonna mount the kill switch on the tiller handle. Grab your three millimeter Allen head and loosen your three millimeter Allen head screws. There's four of them. Now we're just gonna mount the kill switch to our tiller handle. All right, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wire up our ground point. Now, we've measured out where we wanna be, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna strip back some wire just like that. Take your heat shrink, slide it over the top. Keep in mind, this isn't regular heat shrink. This is this, this heat shrink has some sealant inside of it, so when you actually shrink it, it'll seal that connection and make it watertight. All right, so now we're gonna get our terminal. Now, slide your ring terminal over the top after you've rolled it a little bit. You wanna make sure you get a little bit of copper that you can see right through here. Okay, now we're gonna crimp it. Right there. Okay, let's check the connection. That's good. All right, so now we're gonna slide our heat shrink over the top here where we want it. Okay, and, and you, now you can do this part with a lighter, but I have a little, little torch because it's just a little bit quicker and I like using this. If you guys are interested in something like this, I'll link it down in the description below. So we're gonna go ahead, get our flame going and just evenly heat it. And that heat shrink will start to grab onto that surface and it's gonna seal that wiring connection. And now you know when you got it connected right, you're gonna see a little bit of what looks like goo coming out of the end there. That's how you know it's sealed. All right, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take off this bolt, we're gonna mount our, our grounding point underneath the lock washer on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. All right, so now we're just gonna wire in our kill switch to our oil pressure sensor. First things first, let's go ahead and put our heat shrink over our wire so we don't forget about it later. Now let's go ahead, disconnect our oil pressure sensor right here at the snap connector. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna peel back some wire, about like so. 
Now here's the difference. Grab you a, a, a shorter section of wire, 16 gauge. Splice that back, I'm sorry. Trim that back, okay. Now you're putting these two in together into one male connector, like so. Get them all nice and twisted in. Take your male connector, slide it through in here like this. It's gonna be kind of snug, that's okay. And you wanna make sure you got copper showing through here on your little peephole. We do, so what we're gonna do, is we're gonna crimp it. Crimp it nice and tight. Check the connection on both sides, and we're good. Now we're gonna heat shrink it. So let's go ahead and take our little torch again. Get it right where we want it. Just like that. All right, so now that we got the, the male bullet terminal on, we're gonna put on our female. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our heat shrink over the wire. I'm gonna strip back the section of the wire that we can work with. Now we're gonna crimp. Now we are going to seal just like this. Now our connection is done. All right, now that's all done. We're just gonna connect the male to the female and the female to the male. Now we're done. All right, so our last step, we're gonna put our output shaft into our coupler housing. All you gotta do is you gotta slide it in like so. Kind of wiggle it a little bit so you can get it in there. You want to make sure it's lined up straight. Okay, now you see this right here? All this in play? You shouldn't have that. Properly seated, it's not going to have any forward or reverse play. All right, so you notice there's a lot of play here. To fix that, all we need to do is take a rubber mallet, or you can take a hammer with a regular block of wood up against right here and just tap it in until this play goes away. All right, so now we don't have any play. Remember, you don't have to hammer the you don't have to hammer the crap out of it. Just keep tapping it until it goes in. And just keep checking for that play. You should not have any play forward or backwards. Right now, it's properly seated. All right, so now we got the shaft in. Let's go ahead and tighten these up. I want to add a little disclaimer. The book says to do this first before you check the seating of it, but I feel like if you get the right amount of it or you get the wrong amount of in play and these are tight, then uh, you know, you just have to back these out again. So we're doing it this way. Get them nice and tight as you can with your hand. And then let's go ahead, grab a crescent wrench and finish the job. All right, so the very last thing to do, let's go ahead Apply a little bit of blue Loctite to the threads of your propeller shaft. All right, slide your propeller on. Now, keep in mind, one opening is bigger than the other. It's got a taper in it, and also has a keyway slot. There's a keyway on the shaft, just keep that in mind, and line it up. All right, slide our washer on, and now we'll slide in or not. And you're going to torque this to 15 foot pounds. There we go. All right, guys, a real quick one important thing you need to remember before each outing 
make sure you hit all of these grease zerks with one to three pumps of grease. All right, don't put any more than that. They don't need a whole lot. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Hey, if you like this video, comment down below. Let us know why you liked it. If you're up for it, consider subscribing. We got plenty of content coming up with this baby getting out on the water. So until then, we'll see you next time.